So this is the wheel for my Cadillac ATS. It's got some old general tires on it. I'm going to replace these with some new ones and I'm going to do it myself right here in the garage. <laughs> and this is a little cheap balancer machine that I got on Amazon. And all three tires, other three tires, balanced out right dead in the middle with this little balance ball. But this one is off a little bit. And I guess I'm not surprised because I had that little 80 mile an hour vibration. A friend told me it did. I don't think this wheel's balanced as well as it should have been. It's off. So I'm gonna see if I can do better. But first, I'm gonna use my new bead breaker that I made myself. And I'm gonna to try to get these tires off these rims without scratching and damaging them and then putting the new ones on and then balancing them. <laughs> it works really well. Wow, these wheels come off easy. They have so much leverage with this thing. My homemade bead machine works. <laughs> Look at that. Bead is broke. Machine worked flawlessly, perfectly. Just as I had hoped. All right, this is ultra slick. Oh, I just got it everywhere again. I got some good news. Everything's on hold. I'm going in a whole new direction. So I ordered these tires online. I built a bead breaker. It worked great. I was excited. So I started using, hang on, my motorcycle spoons to take this tire off. I watched some videos on YouTube. It looked possible. 40 series, uh, W rated tires, maybe. <laughs> so I gave it a try. So when I attempted to use this, the motorcycle spoons, I have two of them, it bent. I also used these, these by the way, work great. You stick it on the tire and it holds it in the barrel. It holds the bead down inside the barrel of the tire and it gives you all kinds of extra room, right, to play. So you get that slack so you can pop that tire off. So I put two of these on, lots of lube, and I use my top motorcycle tire irons and they just start to bend and bend and bend. So I stopped and I thought, well, I need a better tire iron and a longer one, but I didn't want to spend a ton of money. So I took a chance on these. This is Harbor Freight, $5.99. Not bad, huh? Beefy, heavy metal, long leverage. <laughs> Do you see the issue? It <laughs> just bent. So I was about to buy a more expensive hardened steel spoon. Instead, my dad reminded me of a place he went to last summer in West Lebanon. <laughs> That's really got a ways to go to pop out. Called Tire Warehouse. So he said, why don't you give them a call? They seem like good guys. And I was like, yeah, you know what? They seem like car guys. So I called him up and I talked to Chris. And he said, what do you got? I said, I got four lightweight wheels, low profile tires. I need them taken off and I got brand new tires I need put on. And he said, bring them down. He didn't even hesitate. All right, tires loaded up, off to tire warehouse we go. Oh, I pray everything goes well. I'm so excited to get this taken care of. I was gonna do it manually. I was gonna do it by myself. <laughs> I needed a whole lot more, like a Ken Tools high-end spoon, something very hard, strong steel. He said they're spinning out great. Thanks, man. This is so much easier than Harbor Freight spoons. 
So wheel number three has a high spot and they're gonna rotate the tire to better align it with the rim. Said the rim actually spins out perfect. Uh, so it must just be the tire manufacturing imperfections. These guys know their stuff. They definitely know road force. And this is the first company I've been to willing to actually unmount the tire and turn it, remount it and rebalance it. Most tire shops spin it and send you on your way. Whatever the numbers come out to, they come out to. They charge you for road force balancing, but they don't actually use the road force balancer as it was meant to be used, which means unmounting, rotating until you have the most precise tire balance. Anyway, I appreciate their efforts tremendously. So get this. This tire was 25 pounds on road force. Road force tells you where to rotate the tire versus the rim so you get your best balance. When they got done, it was 10 pounds and it balanced out perfectly. Anything below 16, 15 on the Cadillac will be smooth as silk. Anything above that, you start to feel it. 16 pounds, that was the worst. And the only way to fix it is get a different tire. And he, I asked him, is that manufacturer defect? He said, no. He said, tire manufacturers make their tires and they have a set of rules about tolerances. So after that tire is done, I don't know how they check it, but they decide that that tire is within tolerance, is ready to ship, send it. So I got one of those with a high spot. All the other ones in the green, low, 10 or below, everything looked great. So I pray it's smooth or smoother than I currently have because all of my tires are up there currently. <laughs> oh, I don't want to invest any more money into this car. I just want to drive it till it dies and get something new. And that may happen sooner than later. But right now, with the way the economy is, with the way inflation is, I don't want to do anything. I just want to hold and stick with what I got and pray the Cadillac makes it through. So that's why I bought the tires I bought. Cheap. With good reviews. Not Michelin reviews, but good reviews. And it's funny, with a review, when you pay a ton of money, you are, mmm, with your review, you're on it, like you're critical. But when you don't pay much, like for a tire, I'm gonna roll up my window. I can just see my GoPro flying out the window. <laughs> Anyways, when you don't pay much, like I did for this tire, then you're more lenient. You're just happy it rolls, and if it rolls smooth, you're ecstatic, you're, wow. And if it lasts greater than 20, 30,000 miles, you're even happier. Man, this all went different than I thought it was gonna. I was gonna do this all by myself. I was gonna balance it myself. I'm so thankful for these guys. Look at this muddy car. Got some work to do. I'm gonna spend a little time, clean up my wheels. They got beat up a little bit during the tire swap. Uh, so it'll buff out. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but this is down to the sub paint that won't buff out. So a little WD-40, soak the sticker. And then this is a plastic tire iron for a bicycle. Works great for a little scraping without scratching. Given the context of everything that's going on in the world, lightly scratched up rims really is the least of my worries. All right, nice and clean. No more glue to do the finished cleanup. A little Meguiar's Ultimate Compound, the magic sauce. There we go. And then you get in the, on the rotor, a little uh, carburetor cleaner on the tip of your finger on a rag and wipe it off. So I made my own centering rings. This is 12,000 thick, 
stainless steel. I put grease on them and then I install them. See the ring? Fits perfect. The 2015 base coupe makes 100. 100. And then we go around to verify. One more torquey torque. Nasty. These are my factory wheels. This is the cake that builds up inside of them. And look at what the winter has done to the coating. I mean, that's just like somebody dipped the wheel in acid. All right, I gotta go pick up my son. So let's take the Cadillac ATS for a test drive. These are the Lexani LX UHP 207 tires. 225, 40, ZR, 18. So what I'll be interested in mostly is smoothness and handling. We will deal with longevity down the road, obviously. These have a, I think, 40,000 mile guarantee. Warranty? Guarantee is different than a warranty. Guarantee means absolutely. Warranty means read the fine print. <laughs> Quite frankly, these are the cheapest tires I've ever purchased. I can already tell the sidewall is stiffer, handles way better than the general G-Max RS. They're quiet, it's silky smooth. Oh, and they handle bumps, not harshly. So with less PSI, they ride smoother and they handle better than the general G-Max tires. Oh, that's nice responsiveness. Woo! Oh, I feel like I restored the handling of my car. Oh, I can't wait to get on the highway. That's the next test. All right, I'm in the car. I'm on my way to the highway to test out the high-speed balancing. Pray that it's smooth, no vibration, no shimmy, no shake. So these Lexani tires, in corners, if I had to rate cornering stiffness, the sidewalls and how well they handled the corners, I would say, the stiffest tires I ever had were a set of Pirellis years ago. I don't remember what kind. They were high mileage Pirellis, kind of a performance tire that I actually put on my 99 WS6 Trans Am. I was in Atlanta area. They were on clearance at this shop that I stopped at. And anyways, fat ones in the back, skinnier ones in the front. They look great. But you could do a burnout with these tires and not lose any tread. <laughs> Just hard as a brick maybe hard as steel was a better description they gave zero you'd go around a corner perfectly level and you could tell those tires never flexed never moved and they rode like a brick uh, those were the stiffest so if that was a 10 like no give no comfort super hard stiff tire that Pirelli was a 10 this tire I would say is a 7 it still has some give but not a lot, it seems to be a perfect, to me, a perfect street balance. The other ones were too unforgiving. This one has some forgiveness. It's not the stiffest tire I've ever had, but it handles beautifully. And at normal speeds, the car doesn't give up. It just holds flat and level and you can go pretty quick around corners. If you push it really hard, and I did it back there, it, it rolled over a little bit, tiniest bit. It is not bad, and if anything, a slightly stiffer rear sway bar in this car has always been needed and it tempts me to want to do that. If I had to talk about the general G-Max RS that I, that I used last, I'd give that a three. That was the weakest sidewall high performance tire I've ever had. I mean, it just flopped even at normal speeds. It was terrible. This tire, love it. Super happy with the handling. I'm going to test out some high speed. That's highway speed. Smooth and quiet. Oh, I like that a lot. Oh, hang on, I gotta go. Gotta go. Let's get out a little more remote area. So I don't know if you guys remember, if you've watched some of my older videos, there was a time I couldn't go above 45, 55 miles an hour 
without violent vibration. There was a time where 70 was the threshold. I couldn't go above 70. And even after I had these road force balance last time, I couldn't really go above 70, 75 with the general G-Max tires. I did find one wheel though was not perfectly balanced. But that last shop did not rotate the tire. They just basically mounted them and spun them and as good as they were, here you go, here's your tires. But Tire Warehouse got a high spot and they rotated, they followed the data Road Force gave them and made this as smooth as it possibly could be. And right now, I am a happy camper. Thank you, Tire Warehouse. If there was any recommendations I could give Tire Warehouse, it would be this. When you get a wheel in, spray it down with detailer's wax or even like pledge furniture polish and wipe off the areas that make contact with those rubber isolators, those mounting points. Because if the wheel is dirty, and you crank it down tight on those rubber doodads, it impregnates the rubber doodads with rocks, with dust, with dirt. And the next wheel you put on, it'll scratch that wheel. You gotta clean those things. And if that's already like that, replace them and then start cleaning wheels. It's hard, I know, because wheels here are so filthy. It's New England, it's just, <laughs> we live in dirt. So let me just say this real quick. I, I tested a little higher speed. I can't find a speed at which it vibrates. It's just smooth. That's so good. That's incredible. I need to tighten up the sway bar in the back a little bit. But other than that, these tires are dead on, they're precision. And seriously, I went up to all speeds, all the speed on the highway, and it was just silky smooth. I don't do that, just to test. I was just curious. I wanted to see where there was a limit. It just got smoother and smoother. It's good. It's the way it should be. It's not special. It's the way it should be. And I believe that I had one wheel that wasn't balanced correctly uh, on the G-Max RS, but I also believe those tires were damaged from sitting for too long and had semi-permanent, permanent flat spots. And I also know the rear end in this car is not 100%. But we're nursing down the road. We're a big step further forward than we were last year at this time. That was killer. All right, I'm done. I think we've thoroughly tested the tires. I think I'm really happy with the Luxani. I'm sharing in case it helps somebody else. Buy your Michelins, buy your good tires. I'm not recommending that you step away from those. Or I'm not even saying these are better than those. But for 89 bucks, if you don't have a ton of money, oh, this is a place to go. 40,000 mile warranty on the tires. Does that mean it's tread life? I don't know, but we'll see. We'll check it out. I'll come back around in a few months and when I start to see something that makes me go, oh, <laughs> if that happens. Either way, I'll be back around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following me through this saga. Sorry, I didn't do the uh, full self-install. I don't mind though, no regrets. That's amazing. That worked out. Thank you, God, for leading me to Tire Warehouse and for taking me through this thing. You were always good. God bless you guys. Have a great day. I'm on the Pomfret racetrack. I'm going to enjoy this drive home. We'll see you next video when I do brake rotors and front brake pads. Peace. See ya.